Hello, Kevin Stevenson here with GetMeTheGeek.com, and today we're going to talk about LTE modems as a that you can use for your home or your business as either a backup or a failover for your stuff or just in general. So what I have for you today is this Netgear. Yes, this Netgear LM1200, and it is a 4G LTE modem. And we're gonna take this guy. We're gonna we're gonna take it take it out of the box. We're gonna put an LTE uh, SIM card in there, and we're gonna set this guy up. All right. So let's get started. There you go. You see this guy. This is Netgear, right? So we have a Ethernet port on the back. We've got power, which is USB C. Uh, we'll point that right up there. So we've got power that's USB C, Ethernet sim card and then it looks like we can put some antennas in it if we want to have an external antenna so that's pretty cool and also if you look right here that's a reset button all right so it's in it on you know on top here we've got netgear we've got uh, power looks like uh ethernet uh maybe uh that's activity light and then cellular um so also on the back side you can mount this, so that's pretty cool. So what we're gonna do here, and it looks like it's, this other port is, well, and interestingly, um, if you look at this, this is a little WAN port here, which is for something else. I'm gonna pop that out and see what, see what we got here. So you can pop that little plug out, and, uh, and now, uh, there's a WAN port there. So. Not sure what that uh, if that's live or active or can be used or what, but uh, we're gonna we're gonna check and uh, go from here. So first things first, you've got a, this right. So let's just look at that real quick. Um, again, in your documentation, you have um, some of these things right here. It gives you the description and everything. So that's nothing special. And it and the all important part when you look at this is. You know, it's telling you to insert your nano sim right in there. Okay. And that's what we're going to do. Comes with a power brick and a USB cable, which obviously happens to be USB C on one end and everything. So I like the fact that it's USB C. All I did was put the SIM card in right there. This happens to be a Google Fi SIM, which I took out of my iPad in the paperwork. It tells you to go to 192.168.5.1. So we're going to do that. 192.168.5.1. All right. So here is our Netgear modem. All right. So we need to sign in. Uh, enter the default password and click sign in button. Okay. So it may be a unique password on the modem. There it is. Okay, so now I am connected, logged in. So remember that. So you have to go underneath the modem, get the IP address. So here we are. See, it says it's Google Fi. I have not so great connection just because I am in my basement. So we don't get really super great um, connectivity down here when it comes to Wi Fi or it comes to cellular. So here we go. Um, interesting stuff. You can put all this stuff in, you can put your plans. I think you can some fun stuff here so that's that's cool um i guess that's the overview let's go to settings okay settings uh so you can turn the leds off if you want which is kind of cool you can go to the admin you can change the login i assume there english software up restore updates backups check for updates install file device factory set device research so let's check for updates it's always a good thing is like check for updates updates update 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 so looky there we've got an update so it's going to go and get that update get a new firmware and all that good stuff and this is this is something you should do on regular so if you got one of these if you got one of these and you're going to be using it make sure to get new firmwares on it on the regular because otherwise the bad guys out there they might get into your stuff through unpatched software all right so let's give that just a second and we'll come back okay here we are back again and with the new version 
And I can already tell right off the bat, this is different. And now it has the wired line and the, and the wireless in there too. So as you saw earlier in the video where I popped out that popped out that connection, you can connect that in there for WAN failover. So that's interesting. This is new. And, and like I said, it has it blocked there. Um, it, the cat is super excited about this product. Do you hear? Oh, come on up here, Tuka. Show everybody your love. So let's just do this real quick. So like I said, the cat is super excited about this product. Here it is. Yeah. All right. So <laughs> now, now that's that's the little meowing you might hear in the background. But anyway. So I like this. Um, so now I'll go to overview, which I think is where I'm at. Go to settings. See again, this is where you have the admin. You can turn off the LEDs, the software updates. You can also check for updates. In theory, I don't need to do that right now. Factory resets, like I said, boom, boom, boom. Alerts. Um, so she is really into it right now. Okay, so SMS alerts. So apparently you can get uh, alerts or SMS on this. Uh, uh, let's see, what does it say? Um, yeah, so my guess is that if you set like uh, excess data usage or, or and warnings and so uh, software updates. So and anyway, these check boxes here are already defined and you can put in phone numbers to text. That's pretty cool. So let's go over to mobile, you know, network mode automatically, LT, WCDMA. Um, so uh, apparently it is capable of doing CDMA, which is the old, I think Verizon still uses it on their 3D networks. Um, Sprint used to use it around these parts, but Sprint was bought by T-Mobile. Blah, 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 a bunch of stuff there. So, look, you, you can do automatic, you can hit scan. Uh, you can set up a custom uh, APN, like see here it says T-Mobile, which, you know, if you're using Fi, which is what this is, Google Fi, it, that basically runs on T-Mobile's network. SIM security advanced. So on the LAN side, here's what you got. Now you can set this mode into bridge mode or router mode. So, boom, bridge mode is typically what you're going to want. All right, everybody's okay. Cat catastrophe. Um, cat is really into this stuff today. Okay, so uh, bridge mode, router mode. Bridge mode is what you're going to want typically because you plug that right into your to your firewall and use it as a failover um, or load balancing. Um, and then you got diagnostics you can enable, whatever, you can change your subnet. Failover, okay, so here's where you set up your failover, right? So you got default connection. Uh, so what you have is auto, which uses the wire, when you have the wire line broadband by default and failover to the mobile as the backup. Uh, otherwise, you can go down here and, and click wire, wire line broadband only, mobile broadband only. So on your default connection. So I, this auto is good. Now the keep alive. So keep alive. Uh, so it keeps the connection live when continuously pinging at a set interval. Boom, 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 boom. And that's a way to detect the failover, right? So if you change that, you, you set that. And then so your ping configuration. So you can go down here and, and 8888 which is Google by default, is, is the ping uh, that's in there by default. So if you want to set this up for failover, turn on that ping, keep alive ping. And so when you do that, your internet connection will come through there. All right, so that is pretty cool. That's exactly what this is designed for, right? All right, so that's awesome. So now let's go over here this overview and you see how this, I'm going to go ahead and plug a wire in here. So wires plugged in. We'll see what happens here in just one second. Okay, so there we go. Now, if you take a look at this, that it has the wire connection in there. And so you see the wire lines coming in and then it is on Google Fi for the standby. And so you see how it's set up. And then, so it gives this, this IP address as the IP address because I just plugged it into my randomly into the network here. So I'm gonna take and I'm gonna unplug that. And we'll see if it automatically detects it and see what happens. 
Now that's not a super fast failover. And I may not be simulating a failover very, very good here, but you see here, now it's back like this. And now if I go to Google again, see it gives me that IP address or that connection. All right. And nice thing here is it tells me how much data is being used and you can go all that stuff. So, yeah. All right. So that has been my get to know the Netgear LM1200 is a great option for, for cellular failover backup for your internet connection. So if you have a business and that data having the internet on at all times, 100% of times is an absolute must. Getting a, a redundant, a backup connection is very important. Uh, and this is an option for you. This is an all-in-one solution. So no matter what your situation is, you can go ahead and you can plug this in because it has an extra cord in there and it'll do the failover all for you. So you don't have to have a fancy firewall or anything to use this. However, if you have a fancy firewall, you're probably going to have better options on things to do. Okay. So just uh, keep that in mind. Uh, if you're looking to buy this guy, this Netgear LM1200, there's a link in my link in the description of this video. It's a affiliate link. So if you use it, I get a little bit of extra. It doesn't change your price, but it really helps me out. Uh, this was not given to me. I bought this on my own for a project for my own uses and decided that I wanted to go ahead and give you all the lowdown on what this is and, and how I'm going to use it and why I'm going to use it. So I'm going to actually hook this up to the open sense that I have and use it for the network connection on my next videos to help roll through that and, and make things a little bit easier instead of going through double NAT on my regular network. So if you're following along my open sense uh, series, this is going to be uh, featured in the, in there soon. So, all right. Uh, I'm Kevin Stevenson with get me the geek.com. Uh, go ahead and like, and subscribe to my, uh, channel and this video if you got anything out of it i really appreciate it like if you're getting value out of this do me a favor like and subscribe uh, come back <laughs> come back for more i've got lots of videos if you want to suggest a video on a topic that you're interested in go ahead and drop a comment and we'll accept i'll accept those uh, suggestions and they'll get on my board depending on what they are if you're interested in and uh, helping me out even more and yourself, we have a uh, membership on YouTube where you can join the membership. It's like $1.99 a month. And what you get is access to my Discord channel. So we go in the Discord channel. You can talk to me, uh, other people that might be in there, and discuss your projects or your things that you're going on. I get a lot of comments uh, about, hey, this didn't work for me, this didn't work for me, and everything. And the comments aren't super great for helping people out and getting them over the hump. So if you join the membership for 199, you can pop up Discord <clears throat> and things like that. They're not so easy to just answer in comments. We can get them taken care of there. Uh, or if they, you know, require consulting, we also you can hire us. Uh, you can also buy me a coffee. Thanks for joining me, and we'll see you next time.